Good morning, folks. This is Mike and Shop. Well, I just got back from a little vacation in northern Minnesota ice fishing, and uh, it was a slippery trip up and a slippery trip back, but I'm home safe and sound. But while I was up there, we did a little fishing in a, what they call an ice castle. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, you could Google that. But basically it's like a travel trailer that you just pull right out on the ice and you just stay in it overnight, sleep in it. It's got a kitchen and beds and all that stuff. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I ate a lot of good food while I was up there. I uh, spent some quality time with my son and uh, had a good time, but I'm glad to be home now. And if you've followed my last videos, I've been working on the surface grinder refrigeration, and that's complete now. In my last video, I ground in the chuck, and uh, judging by the finish, uh, I have no reason to believe that it's not nice and flat. But this video, I want to throw an indicator up there and check it out and see you know what the uh, total indicated reading is on the top of the chuck and uh, we'll put that on film for you to see I want to make a back rail for it I'm looking for a piece of angle iron like this this one was a little bit short but I'll, if I can find a, one long enough I'll cut the tail off and uh, we'll, we'll make a back rail for it the other thing too, I have a couple little projects that I want to go ahead and uh, surface grind. The first one is this, uh, these two parallels, and I started these many years ago, and I uh, never completed them, and they're just coal rolled, and I want to grind those in square and parallel. Someday in the future, they need to be hardened. And I'm waiting until I collect uh, enough pieces to get in under my minimum charge at the heat treater. So, uh, but I'll grind them in just to test the grinder out. And then sometime in the future, I'll send them to heat treat and then I'll re-grind them. So that's one project. I have a, a, vice, a set of vice jaws that I want to grind in. And uh, some little odds and ends like that. So that's coming up. Hopefully I can get that all squeezed into one video. So that's enough yakking for now. Let's get to doing. The last video that I posted was the last video on this surface grinder refurbishment. The last thing I did was grind this chuck in. And prior to grinding the chuck in, I had run the indicator around and I found that I was, you know, I think it was about uh, one in, one in maybe four tenths or one in eight tenths TIR, total indicator reading. And um, so I've ground that in. I did it in one pass. When I posted that video, DK put a comment on there and he was curious, you know, what it would look like now that it's dressed and what kind of... Uh, uh, total indicated reading we would have now that we've we've dressed this chuck. So I've set up on this uh, chuck again. Uh, the magnet is off because I'm not going to risk my indicator with a live magnet here. And um, so just to prove to you that this indicator is live, I'll tap it a little bit. You can, you can see the needle moving. All right. So right hand corner, back side. Center, back side, one tenth. Back side left, about a tenth. Moving over to the middle. About a tenth. Center, maybe about a tenth. Maybe. Zero. Moving across to the front right, we're still zero. Center is about uh, minus one tenth. Center left is minus about one to two tenths. So I'd say we probably easier within two tenths 
uh, across the 6 by 18 surface which is really pretty good because when you're actually grinding something um, it's very seldom that you would actually use the, the total magnet uh, area which is 6 by 18 in this grinder. So there you have it. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back with you. It's pretty good. Better than I really would have expected. Nice. Since I don't have the material right now for making a back rail, uh, I've installed the aluminum back rail that came with this chuck on the grinder. And I, as I mentioned in an earlier video, aluminum is not a suitable material long term for back rail. So I really need to make one up that's going to be a little bit more durable. But for our purposes today, we'll use this one and it'll hold up well enough to do that. So I wanted to show you this is my diamond dressing block and this is typical of a diamond dressing block that's used on a surface grinder. I, I use this one for dressing the bottom of the wheel and the side of the wheel just for straight dresses and like I say it's it's real typical for use of that. If, if I'm dressing the bottom of the wheel, I set it on this surface and run across the diamond this way. If I'm doing the side of the wheel, I set it like this and I run it across the back of the wheel. So we'll start out first of all by dressing the bottom of the wheel. Now this is my home stone and I've had this for years and years and years. Um, it's really necessary if you're doing tooling work or any kind of machine work to have a good stone. I personally like the round stones. Uh, as you use them you can uh, keep rotating them and they don't tend to dish as much or wear on the corners like you would a rectangular stone. And uh, So that's my stone of preference. So when I'm doing any kind of surface grinder work uh, this stone is with me at all times. Make sure you have your diamond on the off side of the wheel so that if it does catch, it won't grab it and uh, throw it off the chuck. Okay. Turn the chuck on. Okay, there's the bottom of the wheel. Now, let's move our chuck out of the way. Clean the chuck off. Now, this is not on there quite as tight as I'd like it. It's really not going to be a problem, but what I'll do is I'll block it. So I get out the old one, two, three block. And there you have it. 
sour. Now let's, let's get her in position. Now dressing the back side of the wheel is just an eyeball thing. I had a light on this night. First of all, I take a full path across. Then I dish the wheel off. Hope my head wasn't in the way. Now you'll see why I indicated my chuck in because when I grind the back rail for the first time I should have a minimum of material to remove from the back rail. This saves a lot of time. You should see a bit of a cross hat when you're side wheeling.
Well, I'm going to end this one right here. This video is starting to get kind of long. I just wanted to show you uh, what my parallels look like here. And you saw how rough I dressed that wheel. Very open dress, very fast speed across the wheel. And this is the, the finish you get. Um, people tend to think of grinding wheels like a single point tool on a lathe or something. And, and uh, we're it cuts the material and it moves on to the next section. A grinding wheel is different. It cuts on the leading edge, but then the rest of the wheel follows up and kind of continues to finish from there on. I mean, you got a half an inch on my grinder anyway. You got a half an inch of wheel, and uh, so anyway, uh, this stayed cool all the way across. No spray mist or anything. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's not too bad. I hope you can see that pretty well. Okay, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Adios.